Hey friends, Monaco here with our seventh homework video, Matter and Measurement. We're still in that unit. Today we're focusing on measurement and the metric system. Um, you'll be able to understand the metric system and the units within it after today's lesson, as well as some of the most basic unit conversions like kilograms, to grams, meters to kilometers, liters to milliliters. The big question remains is what is metric? Everybody's heard of the metric system, but here in America we use the imperial or the American system. The metric system is what scientists use because it's based on what we call a standard of measurement. A long time ago, somebody figured out the distance between the equator and the North Pole and then kept chopping that down, dividing by 10 every time, until they got a unit of measurement that they could hold in their hand. They called that the meter. Then they took that meter and used the meter to define other measurements in the system. They took the length measurement of the meter, chopped it into 100 to make the centimeter, and then made the liter out of that. A cube that is 10 centimeters on a side has a volume of one liter. If you take that one liter of H2O, that equals one kilogram. So in this respect, the meter length, volume, and mass in the international or the metric system are all connected. In American system, they're not. They're kind of arbitrary. A pound is a pound, but it's not connected to the foot, and it certainly is not connected to the fluid ounce or the gallon. Okay? So let's focus on what we're going to learn today, measurements in the metric system. So we use SI units, Sistema Internazionale or international system, SI, and they're SI base units which are going to be reported in your reference table. And here, table D has all of the selected important units. Um, the ones that we're going to be using all year, actually, we're going to be using every single one of these this year. This is a reference on the first page of your reference sheet, but if you ever see units like so, and you're unclear as to what they are, what they mean, you feel free to look them up in reference table D because it tells you the symbol, the name, and what it's measuring for. Okay. So in the next portion of our notes, table C is about prefixes. Everybody's heard of a kilometer. One kilometer means kilo meter. Well, meter is back here under that first option. So a kilometer means that it has a prefix with a factor of 10 to the 3. Well, 10 cubed equals 1,000. So what that means, a kilometer, kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Okay, so that's kind of what that represents. And the unit would be K for the kilo, as you can see the symbol, and then M for the meter from the actual measurement. The units that we are going to be using very often are kilo, centi, and milli. So keep these notes on the side here. So we've got that one on the left there. Centi, centi, 10 to the negative 2, which is 0 0.01 equals centi. That's a centimeter, cm, equals 1 one hundredth of a meter. Of a meter. So one one hundredth of a meter, and then milli, ten to the negative three. So milli equals zero point zero zero one, and a milli liter equals zero point zero zero one liters, or one one thousandth of a liter, or one one thousand. Okay. So the main ones that we're focusing on here this year and the conversions are centi, milli, and kilo. Those are the units you're going to run into most often. Okay. Here's some other numerical conversion factors. So what I would like to write in the middle here is 1 km kilometer equals 1,000 meters. 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams. Okay. And then I'm going to say... 1 gram equals 1,000 milligrams. See, these are conversion factors that you might be common, might commonly run into. Um, let's see. 1 liter equals 1,000 milli 
liters. Okay, let me think. Oh, here's another one. Uh, one meter equals 100 centimeters. And one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. Or if you really wanted to, you could say the same one. One meter equals 1,000 millimeters. Meters. Okay, so these are some common conversion factors that you will probably use multiple times this year. So please write them in on this chart and label them common conversions. Okay, so you're going to run into those again someday, somehow. The last little bit is an example here. So this is a simple, simple conversion. Okay, what we've got is kilo meter. Kilo means multiply the root word by a thousand. The meter is the root word. The kilo meaning a thousand. Therefore, one kilometer is one thousand meters. One km equals one thousand m. That's a pretty simple one. Um, one kilogram. Well, again, is one kilo means multiply by a thousand in grams. So one thousand. Grams. So essentially, the prefix K means 1,000. And the grams are just the constant mass measurement. So in a way, the prefix allows us to not write all these zeros. See the 1 stays out front. There's a 1 out front here. But kilo means 3. So the units in the metric system are designed so that you can abbreviate them and make them a lot simpler. So now at this point, you should recognize which units are metric and which units are not. Again, we are talking about grams, meters, and liters, as well as kilograms, kilometers. We don't ever do kiloliters. We do milligrams, millimeters, and milliliters. And that is pretty much about it in chemistry at the region's level. We don't go into pico or nano, and that's about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this very simple, brief video on how to understand the metric system.